talking about the um the brain computer uh interface thing how far away are we all from having like a little um hole in our head so that i can go i want to know kung fu and you can upload a computer program and i can be like neo and matrix is that 100 years away? I, I, is that 10 years I have away? no idea about um, uploading uh, like knowledge like that. Uh, the the most realistic kind of segue to that mm-hmm. is going to be uh, a robot that we control with our brain. So uh, let's say I was an amputee and I don't have a, my right arm. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier. Actually, no, let's use me, for example. So okay. I'm paralyzed, right? I, right. Can't, I can't open my hands, for example. Okay. It's a lot easier for scientists to solve cutting off my hand and replacing it with a robotic hand that I can open and close than opening and closing my own hand. So the human body is way harder to figure out than robotics. And so for the Kung Fu example, it's way more likely that we're going to be able to control a robot that we control with our brain Mm. or potentially ourselves that's like some type of bionic body part, then we're going to like be able to upload knowledge to our brain. Um, that just, we, we, you know, where we just learn anything all the time. Mm-hmm. Language, other other things like language or language will probably be one of the first things that we can upload to our brains. Well, uh, we're already, I don't know about, up. what do you mean by like upload? Because like so much of the, like the translation stuff, like with languages being. Yeah. So uh, just like that, right? Like I think that there's probably. But do you think we'd get to the point where we could like read each other's thoughts? For sure. Yep. Soon. That could be the end of, of civilization. I would say that because if you could read my thoughts, you would go and cry in a corner for the rest of your life. <laughs> and yeah, if I went into, yeah. I don't know, but it's like like there, there's some dark shit in there, man. That probably most people wouldn't want to say. Yeah. So what they're working on first right now, I've I've uh, met with a couple different companies that are in this. One's called Paradromics. The other one's called uh, Neuralink. Mm-hmm. They're both out of Texas. Right. The, these what was companies. The first one? I know Neuralink. Paradromics. Paradronics. Uh, Dromics. D R O M I C S. I think. Paradromics. Well, I've, Forgive me for not studying Latin. What is dramics? I have no idea. Okay. I, I should have asked them. I don't know. Uh, I mean, para is a side to and dramics is. Yeah, something. it's probably something with the brain. Probably. Um, what they're, I, what both these groups are focused on in, in general is what what is our brain doing when we're taking certain actions or when we're speaking or when we're hearing? What does that look like in the brain? And can we mimic that? And can we train like a machine learning algorithm on what that looks like Mm -hmm. so that we can replicate it and then make our own type of thing? So both Neuralink and Paradromics are working on letting humans control an interface on the screen with their brain. Right. So that's in a way telepathy because they're thinking and then they're doing it. So what's stopping it from having two people with brain computer interface chips than just communicating? Like if I can communicate to a computer, why can't I communicate to you if you have one in your brain? Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Because I've seen the videos where they had someone like, was it moving a cursor or like playing a game or, mm-hmm. but it was pretty legit. Yeah, it's probably Nolan. Who's a, yes. Who's, a, who's on Rogan, right? Yep. He did and the he's, whole thing. Yeah. He's like the like main guy right now. He's like the influencer for BCI mm-hmm. right now. He's a- uh, 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 He's like patient quad, zero, yeah, he's, right? Yeah, he's patient one. He's, he's patient quadriplegic. One, uh, he's pretty much same situation as me. He has less movement in his arms. Was super depressed, like most people are that you know have these like crazy uh, disabilities, mm-hmm. and he's like you know bed bound essentially. There's all these interviews of him before, and he's like sad as hell. And then he got the chip. Now he can, you know, yop people in Call of Duty, and he's so happy. And he's got like a he's got a you know a new sound a new sense of purpose more or less That's because so he can cool. do all these things. Yeah, it's crazy. So he can literally play Call of Duty using his brain. Yeah, yeah. He said on Rogan he thinks there's going to be a separate uh, league for people who have brain chips because he doesn't need a scope or anything because he's learned that hey wherever I'm looking that's where the guns go in. And I just pulled. Well, the I mean the military application of that is oh my god, dude. Well, in terms of like target acquisition and. Because if if the difference between just like in a in a in a combat uh, is response time, and I don't have to think, I I don't need that lag of telling of going to my, you know what I mean? Like I could have like oh, yeah. a, a Boston Dynamics dog do it or something. There's a lot. There's a lot. So um, you're familiar with like sensors. So you mm-hmm. have optical, yep. thermal. There's all these t- different types of things that our eyes can't see, but the computer or whatever can see, and so. 
a, a couple of these BCI companies are working on streaming sensors into your brain. So if I wore a, uh, let's just say optical camera on my chest right mm-hmm. here, and I was blind, and you put in a chip, now I can see whatever that sees, which is cool. That's like a real world wow. human application. But if you go like military for that, you put six sensors across my chest, thermal, RF. Thermal, IR, yeah. Yeah, everything, and, everything you can think of. So synthetic after radar, like anything. And now you can, you know, layer all these things in your brain and you can become like a, you know, like a predator essentially. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, that's like, that's almost like the mo- did you ever see like Universal Soldier back in the day? No. It was a very not good uh like Dolph Lundgren uh Jean-Claude Van Damme movie about like this like future tech that they put soldiers in and like they're basically dead soldiers they had been killed in combat and then they like brought them in this like secret program and mm-hmm. put them all these things but they had that almost like predator type capability with like a gun turret on their head and where things okay, moved I, and I think was, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean that's that's it's, we're probably headed in that direction. Most of these companies don't want to talk about that because uh, that becomes really scary really quick. And they want to focus on like the do good aspects of it, like solving paralysis. But doesn't it like, I mean, I have to believe that so much of the advancements just in prosthetics is a direct result of the need from 100%. what we're seeing from our, our military I, veterans. Almost everything that we use in our lives be- come from the defense yeah. fund. Right. Like our phones, yeah. GPS. I mean, at, like, most people these days are wearing three GPS devices on their body, their phone, their whoop, mm-hmm. and their car, let's say, right? And like, that was all because that we're trying to figure out how to navigate in the military. And then that got passed down 